today on Making It with Chef Sherry, we're making stained glass inspired votive holders. Using just a few markers and a couple of embellishments, we'll transform simple glass jars into stunning pieces of art. Perfect for gift giving, they're guaranteed to make spirits bright and colorful. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have got a fun and fabulous project for you to make. Not only is it fun and fabulous, it's also very frugal because you can now purchase Sharpies. Well, you've probably been able to purchase them for a while now. Sharpie markers at your local Dollar Tree, as well as the rest of the materials I use to make this project. So we are gonna be making a really cute, I'm gonna call this a candle holder because it's really, really pretty when it lights up from the inside. But you could use this for a lot of different things. They actually come with a little lid, so you could put some candy in it. You could use it to hold all of your markers, your Sharpies. And if I'm being honest, I'm actually not using Sharpies today for a couple of reasons. Number one, the colors I wanted to use, I had used all up in my Sharpies. <laughs> and I do love Sharpie markers, but I found these on Amazon not too long ago, and they were actually cheaper than Sharpies. These were $15, I think, for a set of 36 maybe, or 24 But I fell in love with these. And so a few months ago, I bought my first set of Copic markers, which was only about eight markers but they are like $8 a piece. <laughs> so it was like $64 in markers. So I guess they're more like a professional marker. You can refill them and that sort of thing. And I just wasn't that impressed. I'm sure they're like really high quality, like inks and stuff maybe. But um, what I found was the ink just doesn't come out as quickly as it does with these markers. And so markers are either alcohol-based or they're water-based. And so if they're water-based, they can wash off very easily. If they are alcohol-based, which is what a Sharpie is, then it's permanent. Or so they say it's permanent. This is a little tip. If you write on something that is porous, it's going to be permanent. You really can't get it out of there. You can try. <laughs> but if you write on something non-porous like this, so if you don't believe me, I'm going to write on my countertop here. As a matter of fact, we're going to let this dry too. But you can get it out of or get it off of a non-porous surface by using some alcohol. And so you do, use, do need to use 91%, I believe. I haven't, I've always heard it's 91%. I don't know. You could probably try like 70%. I'm not sure if it'll get it off or not. The really cool thing is if you use Sharpies like on a t-shirt, so that's a porous material and you try to put alcohol in it, it'll make it run. So it's kind of like a really cool effect. I've done that on purpose before. Um, but again, on a non-porous surface, it will come right off. So that's a cool little tip to know, I think anyway. <laughs> All right. So, and I'll put a link to the markers that I'm using down in the description below. And what I love about these is it looks like I used all these different colors. Like there's shades of purple and green in here when really I only used three different colors. I used two shades of each. So two blue, I'm missing one, here it is. Two pink and two yellow. All right, so the jars, the jars I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And like I said, they come with the lid. And I decided to save the lid, even though I'm going to use this for a candle holder, because you could take some wire and wrap it around and make it a, a hanging candle holder. I almost didn't get that word out there for a second. You could make this a hanging candle holder outside, but you'd have to bring it inside when it rains. Unless you had a lid to put on it, then you could seal it up. So that's why I decided to save my lids. Besides, I might want to turn it into a candy jar or something. <laughs> but anyway, so I have candles down in here so I can light these when we're done and I can show you just how pretty they are. But all I'm going to do is all these little diamonds here, I'm just going to color in. And I'm just going to do this randomly. I'm not going to be all picky about it or anything like that. So just one here, one there. And then I also want to make sure I get these little half ones down here. I don't know if you can see those very well. This is kind of the lighter shade of blue. <laughs> Squeaking. And so that's the cool thing about being able to wipe it off. See that part that I got there? I went a little outside of the lines. As long as it's still wet, you can just wipe it off with your finger. And if it's already dried, get a, get a little cotton swab and some of the alcohol. And you can get it right off of there. But that's all I did. Just go in and color all of these. And if you can't find these exact jars, I got these a couple of weeks ago. And when I was in there yesterday, I didn't see any more. But they have all kinds of other cute jars for Christmas. So you can do like your own design. And I'm making a mess of this one here. You can just draw a design on here. You don't have to have these little, you know, diamond shapes or whatever. And if you wanted to outline it, so see the little, 
the powder on here is raised. You could actually use some puffy paint and do it that way, and then it would give you a little bit of dimension. And this takes a little bit of time, but you know what? It's really like relaxing, I think. <laughs> I love to sit in color. I always have, ever since I was little. So I'm just going around the jar, just placing them in random spots. And then I'll go back with my other shades. So this blue is a little bit darker. Or no, that was the lighter one. I used the same one. Darn it. This must be the darker one. Wrong end. So these are really cool because, I'm not sure if you guys have seen these, but these are brush tip markers. So a Sharpie hat, this is called a nib or a tip. So a Sharpie, a Sharpie has like a, a bullet tip on it. And then this kind of tip is called a chisel tip. And then this is called a brush. So see how it's kind of flexible and it bends? That's what made me fall in love with these markers also, as opposed to Sharpie. And Sharpie might even make brush tip markers now. I'm not sure that they do. But it used to be really hard to find a nib that was a brush or a tip that was a brush without paying a lot of money. So that's why I fell in love with these. And I just love the way the ink flows out of these. Really quick. It's super vibrant, especially this blue. So basically, I'm just going to keep going all the way around the jar until I've got it all filled in with color. And you know what? You don't have to fill the whole thing in, in with color. If you don't like the whole thing filled in, if you like it just like that, you can leave it like that as well. But I do like all the... <laughs> you guys know I love rainbows. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and color all these in. And then we'll head on to the next step. All right. So I think that is it for the coloring. And then I actually got out a bunch of different stuff. I did not know what I was going to do with this thing. So you can grab all kinds of stuff. You can put little flowers on here. I mean, this would be great for springtime too. I just love it at Christmas because it reminds me of stained glass, especially that you see like on the church, I think is really pretty. You can add some little pine cones. And so I just kind of played around with different things. You can add ribbon, like little pearls. You could add like little ornaments, like these candy canes would be kind of cute. And I just kind of settled on these right here, which, oh my gosh, aren't these gorgeous? These remind me of something that you would see like in the 70s for Christmas. I don't know what, but it just reminds me like of something we had on our tree when I was little, but I just love them other than the fact that they're getting glitter everywhere. <laughs> so what I did was, this is just an old piece of jewelry. So I just grabbed my glue gun and we're gonna put a little dot of glue right there. And we're just gonna keep adding a little bit of glue all the way around. I'm gonna try not to get too much glue in here. except for where I want it to go. And if you guys were watching me last year, you know, I said my husband bought me a cordless glue gun and I didn't feel worthy and I made him take it back because it was kind of pricey, but oh my gosh, this is a life changer. I have been gluing stuff like <laughs> left and right. One of the things that I love is I was making a wreath the other day and I wanted to put an ornament on it that said, Merry Christmas. And it was kind of like the focal point. It was a smaller wreath. And so I thought to myself, well, I'd really like to take this outside and hang it up and then decide where I want the placement. And I thought, well, I can take it outside. I'll just take my cordless glue gun with me. So I'm in love with this thing. I, <laughs> I'm going to put a link to that in the description as well, because maybe you're looking for a gift for a crafter that's on your Christmas list. And I'm telling you what, I love this thing. So the battery... So you can buy it with the battery or I think you can buy it without. Well, it's probably made maybe for a man because, but I got short fingers anyway. <laughs> so that comes off and then I've got the charger over there. So this just goes down in the charger. Charges in 30 minutes. Sometimes I don't even wait that long. I love it. It has a drip plate right there. So no more putting a saucer under there. But you guys know if you've messed around with like little glue guns, even the bigger ones, they usually have that silver thing that comes out and it holds it, but it never works because the cord is so heavy. You knock it over. <laughs> I know when my girlfriend comes over, me and Dee, we sit and we do crafts and we have like glue guns and cords and everything. And last time we put this right between us and it was perfect. Like we just took turns using it and I loved it. So that was just a piece of broken jewelry I put on there, but you could get some gold ribbon from the Dollar Tree or what have you. Again, you use whatever you like. And then this is from the Dollar Tree as well. Also kind of reminds me of something out of the 70s <laughs> or something from outer space, maybe. I'm not sure. 
So I just cut some little pieces off of here and here's what I did. So that's kind of a little too long. So I just trimmed it right there. And one thing I made a mistake on this one, you see there's a seam right there in the glass. So I would have really should have taken this and put it on the other side and I really wasn't paying attention, but it's okay. I'm going to put, make a trio of these and I might even put some of this, you know, I'm going to make like a tablescape with it. So, or a centerpiece, I should say. So I want to avoid that line. So I'm going to flip it around to this side and I've already got a bit of glue on the glass right there. So we'll try to cover that and I'll put a little bit of glue there and I'm going to put this here. And I'm going to put this other piece that I cut off. I'm going to use that as well and stick that in there. And then we can use this one. And so sometimes if it gets really hot, I will just use my scissors to hold something in place until it, until the glue cools and dries. So that's pretty. And I thought this is like a little too big. So I trimmed these as well. And I don't like to waste anything. So <laughs> Even if I don't use this little piece, because I kind of like it when it comes to a point and this one really doesn't. Well, actually, I kind of like the way it looks. So we're going to go ahead and put it on there anyway. Just like that. I'm going to hold it until it dries. But even if I weren't going to use this little piece on here, I would still save this. I know it sounds silly to save such a little piece like that, but I will always find something to use it on. And things that I made like last year for Christmas. I will tear apart and make something new this year for Christmas. I'm constantly repurposing things. But that's what I enjoy doing. So put that one right there. And let that dry. And so I had another one that I had already made up, but I didn't finish the whole thing. And I do not think we have enough of this to go around. So I'm going to have to go dig in like a jewelry box for another <laughs> necklace. Or I may, I'm trying to think, I think this might have been like a two-layered necklace and there might be another piece of this. I have got a, I call it a junk tote. <laughs> it's like this big and it's full of nothing but broken jewelry. And I love it. And so does my friend D. We like to dig around in there and <laughs> see what we can find. It is like Christmas too when you go through that box. I love it. So here's another little like, um, what would you call this? Like a pick or floral thing that I got for a dollar. Also at the Dollar Tree. I don't know if you guys heard or not, but apparently the Dollar Tree is raising their prices to a dollar and a quarter. I mean, that's just insanity if you ask me. <laughs> Might as well say $1.50 after tax. But, you know, sometimes I find stuff there that I just, excuse me, just can't believe it's a dollar, really. I mean, they carry some of the same things that you get at like Hobby Lobby. I found like some laser cut little wood pieces. I got butterflies and stars and hearts and all kinds of stuff. And I swear they were like seven, eight dollars for a package at, it was either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And it was a dollar there. And I got several in a package. Super happy. Look how cute these are looking. So two of them are finished. I'm going to have to finish this one later, I guess. Maybe I'll just make like a centerpiece like this out of these. <laughs> then photograph them. But isn't that absolutely adorable? And you know, it doesn't look, uh, I was going to say it doesn't look cute on your table. Of course it looks cute on your table, but it would also make a great gift for somebody at Christmas. They'll never know that you just bought some stuff at the Dollar Tree and put Sharpie markers on it. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, even if you can't find these jars at your Dollar Tree, pick up a regular just glass. You could do this on the bottom of a plate and then seal it with some, well, it depends if you want to eat with it or not. If you wanted to eat off of it, you would seal it with like some dishwasher safe Mod Podge, but all kinds of things that you can put Sharpie on. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.